Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby and have ourselves a drink. All right, and that song means that we are back in the lobby bar for the week of August the 26th, 2024. Brian and Michaela here with you. And Michaela, this month we focused on Domaine de Canton, a very excellent bottle of a ginger liqueur, if I must say so uh, myself. Not a sponsor, it could be, but we had this bottle uh, in our in our liquor cabinets, our respective yeah. liquor cabinets. Mm -hmm. And we said, what are we going to do with that? And it turns out that anything you do with Domaine de Canton is delicious. Pretty much. Uh, it's interesting because when we first, uh, well, when you first went thought of this whole idea of having kind of a, a going through a bottle and, you know, discovering a bunch of drinks that you can make with just one liqueur. I was like, mm, I don't know. And when we picked Domaine de Canton, I was like, I don't, I, I don't know how well that's going to go. Cause it's not like grenadine where you just add it to random mm. stuff. Right. Uh, but turns no, out it's good. Uh, <laughs> actually it's good. <laughs> and, uh, so if, if you're on the fence, if you've been listening to lobby bar for three weeks now and you're like, I don't know, it's ah, it's a it's a big bottle. I don't know if I actually uh, use it enough to justify the expense. Use it, buy it, just go buy it. This stuff is awesome. Uh, we have had so much fun creating all the drinks that we've created um, so far, and it's been just amazing. So do it. Uh, this today is no is no different, right? You've got this really amazing ginger sidecar that you're going to share with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. One of the neat things about uh, this bottle in particular is we've we've gotten all of these uh, recipes that we've featured through the month uh, from Domain Decanton's website, and they do have a couple of like one off like special things, but a lot of these are literal just riffs on like these classic cocktails, and that is what we're doing today. I figured that would be good. Uh, finally, went outside yesterday morning, got my coffee, went outside because it wasn't fourteen thousand degrees. Uh, it looks like the leaves might be starting to uh you know show the signs of summer a little bit and that could only mean one thing michaela that means fall is coming and with fall means cognac so let's do a ginger sidecar today uh classic classic drink this one's going to be gingery and delicious though uh and really simple uh go ahead into a shaker tin with some ice throw two ounces of your favorite cognac one ounce of your Domaine de Canton, and a half an ounce of lemon juice. Go ahead and give that a vigorous shake and then strain it uh, into a chilled coupe glass, or you could do like a martini glass. Probably You could probably even do like a rocks glass if you wanted wanted to. I like the coupe glass for mine because it looks beautiful. It's got this orangish hue. And this one's going to have just a, a subtle hint of ginger, which is going to be perfect for a fall day. Because yeah, pumpkin right. spice season is back, Michaela. Oh, but it's still ginger season around here. So it's ginger season until until proven otherwise. Yeah. Until the the leaves start to really fall is is when I when I when I start to get my basic pumpkin spice out. This is perfect. This drink is perfect. It's easy. It's delicious. Uh mm -hmm. go make yourself one. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, uh, because of the lemon juice, use fresh lemons. Don't don't use the, the the fake stuff unless you're doing some super juice or whatever they're whatever the cool kids are calling it these days. Um, get some get some real lemons. Do that. Um, cognac. There's a bunch out there. I don't think you have to spend a ton of money on like high end cognac. I mean, we we just use a bottle. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was a, a regular old bottle that you can find at any liquor store. And it was delicious. I uh, didn't realize that a sidecar was so easy to make. I don't know why mm -hmm. I thought that there was, I don't know, bitters or some shaken orange zest or something in it. I don't know why I thought that, but this is easy. It's delicious. Give it a shot, especially with the Domaine de Canton, that umptiousness of the ginger. I mean, I didn't even like ginger before this month, and now <laughs> I don't think I can get enough. It's great. You're a ginger aficionado. Yes, yeah, a subtle riff. Um, you mentioned, Michaela, the the traditional sidecar is made with uh, orange. So that's what the Domaine de Canton is uh, taking the place of uh, there. But yeah, just a nice little riff on it. It's It brings a lightness to it to an otherwise you know kind of heavy drink but you know still get those cognac notes in there which is nice like i said as we're uh hopefully getting to fall season football is right around the corner so i guess the cognac uh time is upon us so uh mix one of those up let us know let us know what you thought about domain to canton month because uh, that was a lot of fun we're going to be featuring a, a new spirit starting uh next week is it going to be pumpkin spice i don't know you'll have to stay tuned to uh find out about that uh spoiler it's not going to be uh, another spoiler michaela that is uh deadpool and wolverine won the weekend again uh you know it, nothing can stop the uh, Hugh Jackman and uh, Ryan Reynolds of all of this there. Another $18.3 million followed up by Alien Romulus, a film that we got to see uh, yesterday and are probably going to be chatting about a little bit over on our Patreon. It ends with us, Blink Twice, and The Forge uh, round out the top five. Deadpool and Wolverine can't be beat. 
Uh, but Alien Romulus was pretty good, Michaela. I'm excited to talk a little bit about it. Not doing a full show, just a little Patreon uh, snippet, but I had a nice cocktail. Got a really cool glass and had a good time at the movie. Uh, what were your uh, kind of initial impressions of uh, Alien Romulus? Was it as scary as you thought it was going to be? It, it was less scary. Uh, I mean, there were still some really good moments. I think uh, it was equally as scary. You were just brave. You were the brave little toaster. Thanks. I was. A, I, I did feel pretty brave. I did shriek a couple of times. The people next to me were like, mm -hmm. what is up with her? Um, I will say I, I really liked it. I thought that the um, I thought that it encapsulated like the first alien and the second aliens um, mm -hmm. really, really well. If you are a fan of like the original Ridley Scott um, kind of uh, look and feel of alien, I, I think this is going to be right up your alley. It's it's a mm -hmm. little bit different than um you know kind of the the prometheuses that that we've kind of had that were um just much more action driven this 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 was this was amazing i really liked it so if you haven't seen it go see it yeah and check out our uh, patreon if you want to get a little bit more yeah. uh, information on that one it's patreon.com slash drink the movies uh we did see a trailer for a movie it's the only uh one really that's coming out this week that i uh thought we should uh, make mention of here that is 1992 um it's not anything i'd heard of until we saw the trailer for it yesterday um it's uh set in 1992 it's kind of this crime uh family drama thriller sort of thing set against the backdrop of the uh rodney king uh riots there in 1992 which i think is an interesting premise you know to set kind of this crime thing like on the on the background of you know this this terrible historical event here in our country um but i have some concerns about it michaela it looks it looks pretty good right it's got tyree gibson in it who's great it's got ray liotta in it who of course is great scott eastwood in it who always does a very admirable job in the things that he does but runtime on this is only an hour and 36 minutes michaela it seems like that is that is a lot of dinner yeah. to get through in an hour and 36 minutes but uh, what do you think about the trailer yesterday any any sort of hopes or interest in seeing this at some point I, i'm actually excited uh to see this film um, I, I first thought it was going to be kind of a, a, a day in the life when the day was the Rodney King trial. Mm, um, yeah. and that, that made it, uh, I mean, you know, as a person of white privilege, I was like, Oh, I'm going to be really uncomfortable, but this looks really good. Um, but then it kind of had like halfway through the preview, it turned into this crime, like, uh, I don't know, uh, escapism kind of like, we're going to, we're going to heist, you know, we're going to have a heist in the middle of mm -hmm. this horrible thing that's happening. And so, um, it seems to be a little bit of like intrigue. And so I, I don't know, like if, if oceans 11 was in the backdrop of like a, a very profoundly awful part of history, like if that happened on a very awesome, you know, d day that everybody kind of remembers where they were when it happened mm -hmm, kind of thing, right. what would that, what would that look like? And so this, this seems a lot more, I don't know, uh, it, it's a lot more in depth and deeper than than just kind of a, a heist film, which I like. So, uh, and I don't know enough. Um, being young, I was pretty young when when that day actually right, yeah. occurred. So it's it inspired me to like go look up what actually occurred and like why it's important to know and all of that. So that's really cool. I mean, that's why you go see movies, right? So yeah, and I hope I hope it treats that yeah, that event with care because yeah, like you said, we were pretty young. So I mean, there's like a whole like generations or the people that don't know like anything about you know uh, this this day, this thing that happened um, in America yeah. in 1992. So uh, yeah, so you got that coming out if you want to go out to the movie theater and see it. But you might be staying in uh, this week because there's some things uh, coming out. So a lot of people really love this. My wife and I watch it. I think it's it's pretty good. Um, I I skew on the pretty good uh, side of this, uh, but Only Murders in the Building is back for its fourth season. Uh, so you've got that to come into Hulu. Uh, you've got Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Uh, a lot of people are excited about that one. I know someone uh, in your house who's very excited for it. I already like, set the day aside so we can watch the first episode. Season 2, yep. Rings of Power is coming out on Amazon. And Michaela, I have to admit, I'm really excited for this. There is a new documentary coming to Hulu. Um, it is called After Baywatch, Moment in the Sun. Uh, it's hard to describe to maybe our younger listeners or people who think of Baywatch as this jokey thing, but Baywatch quite literally changed the entertainment fabric of the world when it came out in 1989. It did. Um, and we're not just talking about the, the, <laughs> not just the red fabric, um, not just the red fabric, <laughs> not just the red fabric, uh, not just Pamela Anderson. It really did. Um, and, and look, uh, we've never covered, you know, we don't do a lot of really like super light comedies, um, but we never covered the the remake with The Rock and mm, um, mm -hmm. Zac Efron. Right. But 
if we did, I think that'd be a really good time because it's one of those things they don't seem to poke, they poke enough fun at them to not take it so seriously, but it was quite serious. I mean, people like lived and died by Dave Hasselhoff. I mean, he was at the wall. He was at the, yeah. he, he, <laughs> when they, when they, you don't when they took the, the wall down yeah. in Berlin, they were like, are you ready for a revolution? It was amazing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, to, to put a little bit of uh, context in it, maybe we'll have to do the Baywatch movie. That would be fun sometime. Um, but yeah, it, it came out in 1989. I think Pamela Anderson joined in in 1992. So we would have been like, I don't know, like like 10, 11 years old when when that happened. You weren't a big TV watching kid, but like everyone in the whole world knew of Baywatch. That was like their glimpse into America. It was like broadcast in like 180 countries. Like it was insane. Yeah. Like it was insane, like the level of popularity that that Baywatch had, you know, not just here um, in the United States, but really around the whole world. It was like this first big, like global, like television sensation. So that's kind of fun. So I'm, I'm kind of interested to see, you know, that documentary and uh, go back and you know, <laughs> relive uh, those beach days there. So uh, that's what we've got coming out on TV. If you want to check in on the podcast, of course, last week we talked about Rear Window. That was an excellent time looking back at that classic classic film this week we're going to be talking about the new crow uh so if you haven't went out and seen it and you probably didn't uh go ahead and do that uh, and well, we'll be talking about the new crow uh this week on the main show we talked about the old crow um over on patreon uh this week again that's patreon.com slash drink the movies if you want to uh you know get a little bit of our uh, insights and thoughts and feelings about that original crow and then uh on the main show we're going to be talking about the new crow so that was fun we made it out to the movies twice this weekend uh, Michaela saw the crow caught alien Romulus. We almost caught up with all the things we told everyone we were going to go see uh, this month. So that was pretty good and had a good time going out to the movies as always. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's lobby bar. Go ahead and grab yeah. some cognac, finish off that bottle of Domaine Decanton, and we'll be back to chat about all the movie things next week. <laughs> 